So today we are going to talk about vegetable grafting. If you have heard about this, you think about the fruit trees. We have been using grafting for thousands of years for fruit tree production, and it's very similar concept. This is what is actually used for commercial production, and you can also use it at home garden. And so I'm going to show you this scary part. This is actually from two plants. This is called scion. You use the top, and you can use whatever variety you want to grow for fruit. The lower part, this is called the rootstock. And this is uh, some kind of variety spread to be very good at disease resistance or very vigorous. So if you search tomato rootstock online, you will find different rootstock varieties, and you can bind the seed and grow this part. But you never want to grow the rootstock seeds to give you the fruits because their fruits are not good. They are just bred to be, have very good root systems. And by grafting, you combine these two different varieties into one plant. So by grafting, you change the roots and you can bring the disease resistance to your fruiting varieties. At the same time, you can improve the vigor and so you can have higher yields from the grafted plants. That's why people will use grafted plants for their production. And so this is a grafted tomato plant. After it heals and reconnect, now you can grow them as a regular tomato plant and get a very good fruit, but the plants will be stronger because you make the transformation by grafting. The next question is how we can make it happen, how to graft the plants. I have these two examples. These are two tomato plants and these are two uh, pepper plants. We use the same methods to graft tomato and pepper. It's called splice grafting. It's the most common and the easiest way to do it, and it's just so easy that you can learn it in a second. Uh, there are other vegetables also be grafted very commonly, like the melons, uh, including watermelons and some uh, like uh, cantaloupe and mixed melons. Uh, people also graft cucumbers. Those are currently the most commonly grafted vegetables in the world. And it's, I think it's just about the imagination. You probably can graft anything as long as you think about the uh, genetic compatibility. You probably cannot graft something very far away in their genetics, like across the families. But as long as they are close enough, like within the family or even within uh, the same genus species, then they are compatible, then you can put them together. The first example is tomato. Now I'm going to show you what are the tools you need. Very, very simple tools. Just need some kind of razor blades or whatever you can cut the plants. And I always just use this single blade razor blade. And you also need something to clip or hold the plants after you cut them. There are different grafting clips you can buy online. This spring is called spring grafting clips. It's the most expensive one. It may cost more than $10 for 100 pieces, but it works very well. There are other types that are much cheaper, like this silicone type clips. It works very well too. It's just a, a couple of dollars for 100 pieces. So these are very affordable. Or you can just use whatever you, you can find at home. Um, I used to make grafting clips myself, and I just used the regular fish tank tubing, just cut it into like this length, and then make a slip in the center, and I use it, and it, was so, it just works so well, and it's so cheap. To make the grafted plants, let's just pretend this is the rootstock. It means uh, the plants have much better root system. And this is the variety you want to grow for fruits. Then the first step is to remove the shoots from the rootstock. You want to cut it below the two seed leaves or below the cotyledons because it's very important to not let the, the shoots grow back from your rootstock. I said the rootstock is good for the roots, but never good for the fruits. And after you remove the shoots from the rootstock, the next second step is to cut the scion. You can cut the scion wherever the stem diameter matches with your rootstock. So it doesn't matter whether it's above or below the two seed leaves. Just cut wherever the stem diameter matches. And after you cut the shoots from the scion, the third step is to put the two portions together. And after you put them together, use any type of clips you can find or buy and just secure those two portions together, and that's done. 
Now, after you have this grafted plant, the next step is how to help it heal because it's really severely wounded. You see, once you take the clips off, it's still not connected. And you need to do a very, very good job by not letting the plants wilt in the coming about five days until the plants have time to heal. Healing means the plants will connect. And after it reconnects, you can take the clips off and you will see that it becomes like one whole new plant. During those five days for the healing process, the key is to prevent water loss from those leaves. So you need to bring up the humidity in whatever environments you want to give the plants. There are many creative ways you can help the plants heal. If you're only grafting a few plants, I kind of invented this method. You can just take some kind of cups at home and to put together. Before you put the plants in, you want to bring in the humidity inside the cups. So you just use a spray bottle to spray some water in. And you can see there's some condensation on the wall of the cups. That's a good sign. You want to check once a day and make sure you still see condensation on the wall of the cups. That means the humidity inside is very high. And then you put the plants in and just keep the cup closed for about five days. You can put this in your room or in the house or wherever. But as long as it's not exposed to direct sunlight, this will be perfect. You don't need to have anything else to cover the cup. Another way to do it, I brought this small plastic container. And you can find things like this at home easily. The same concept, you want to make it humid inside. So still spray water inside before you put the plants in. And then you can put your graphic plants in this container. And then you just cover it. So this container creates a humid environment for the plants to heal in the coming five days. Another way to do it. The third way, I think it's so, it works so well and it's just so accessible at home. Just use whatever cardboard. And again, the same thing, you want to make it wet. You may want to um, wet the whole cardboard and that will keep the moisture inside very well for the coming days. You may, need, you may not even need to respray for the coming five days. And then just put the plants in, close up the cardboard, and that's it. So very, very simple. And all these are for small scale uh, home garden setting. But if you want to make hundreds of plants, you may need a larger container. This is an, an example here. This is what I make for large-scale production, you just use some kind of uh, frame, and I use PVC pipe here to build a frame, and then cover the frame by plastic. And uh, you see, I just use duct tape to, to take the plastic. And if you put this indoors, then that is all it needs. But if you put it outside or wherever it had, it will expose to the sunshine, then you may want to cover it with some kind of shade cross, or this is just landscape uh, black cross. But the idea is to keep it covered so it doesn't warm up inside if it's heat by the sunshine. Another addition uh, component you want to add is kind of, a, a, this is the capillary mat or whatever can hold water. And you can put the mat inside or the, at the bottom of the, the chamber. That way, it will help increase the humidity inside. So it's still very simple, but this single chamber can hold many plants. So this is big enough or good enough for a large scale operation. And just create a humid environment for the plants for about five days. After that five days, when you take the plants out, you will realize the plants will be already healed and reconnect. And that is the time you can take the clips off. And then you may want to still uh, keep the plants for a few more days before you plant it outside as a normal plant. So that's it. And thank you for watching.
Gardening. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.